Here at Michigan Magazine, we've walked the shores of each and every coastline of this Great Lake State, taking in the beauty and romance of each length of beach. With every visit of this kind, we always are met somewhere along the line with the sight of Michigan's shoreline castles, her lighthouses, or in some sad cases, stumble upon the remnants or foundation of a former lighthouse site. These gems of Michigan's maritime history are happily on the receiving end of an upswing of interest and enthusiasm for preservation efforts. Great Lakes lighthouses are more and more being adopted by local historical societies who are preserving the past and unique heritage of each lighthouse for future generations by turning them into museums that are literally beacons of the past. But so sad is the footnote we read of how there just aren't enough societies or interested groups around to save all the decommissioned and forgotten lighthouses. Lighthouses whose sole purpose was to save lives and to guide the lost into safe harbor. Many will be lost simply because no one knows of their plight or even that they exist. Left to the mercy of time and the fickle Great Lakes gales after they decidedly are of no further use with the advancement of guidance technology. This would have been the scenario of one of Michigan's most majestic lighthouses if it weren't for a bit of serendipity playing in the lives of Don and Nellie Ross. The Rosses were exploring the wooded shoreline of Chris Point in the UP, which is 11 miles west of the famous Whitefish Point. The Chris Point property ran adjacent to property the Rosses owned. On one of their exploration adventures, they spotted the Chris Point light setting majestically along the sandy beach, a beach that was creeping closer and closer to the tower and adjoining building because of unchecked erosion. Nellie set out to successfully form a historical society to save the tower and its history. Volunteers joined in sandbagging efforts to protect the adjoining building from further erosion. After learning from the Army Corps of Engineers that the structures had a life expectancy of no more than five years. That was in 1996. A few months later in November, the raging waters of Superior swept away the land that supported the adjoining building that stood its ground since 1904. It crumpled in a heap alongside the tower. Michigan Magazine was invited to visit the site in the summer of 1997 in hopes that the lighthouse plight could be shown. Fear was mounting with the newly formed organization that the tower was next to go. Time and money was of essence. And if something couldn't be done within the next few months, the wrath of Superior was sure to take its toll. We traveled 36 and a half miles from Paradise, Michigan, down 18 miles of unpaved wilderness roads led by Nellie, then walked another half a mile to the site of what was left of the Chris Point Light. We made our way around the rubble of the fallen building and made our way up the 58-foot tower to the top, where he talked with Nellie about the current situation. We're at the top of a lighthouse, which is probably one of the most endangered lighthouses in the United States, isn't it? That's right. Because it's possibly going to be falling into Lake Superior here within the next year or so. What I understand at the moment, it's probably the most endangered. Mm -hmm. so. Now this is the Crisp Point Lighthouse. Yes. Now everybody has heard of Whitefish mm -hmm. Point, but this is, this is kind of out of the way. We have to take some, some trails back, but it's got a lot of history and heritage. Yeah, how old of a lighthouse is this? The lighthouse was established in 1904. And prior to that, we had the life saving station in this area. Mm -hmm. It was in the late 1800s. Mm -hmm. and, but this lighthouse uh, has been going until 93, where it was decommissioned. Really? That recent? <clears throat> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it went from the last light keepers, where it was in the 50s, and then from that point, it went to, sol to uh, battery, marine battery operated light and then to solar light. I see. And then, uh, that was out in 93. Oh my goodness. Now what we see here is it's right on the shoreline here. Now the actual shore when it was first well commissioned many years ago was well, quite, well, quite a ways and there's much more to this area than, than this just beacon here. Right. We had <clears throat> actually there was 400 feet of land when, when this was built and nobody was really thinking of, of there being an erosion problem for this lighthouse. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an oil uh, building. There was a large um, uh, foghorn building and the chimes and everything. There was, um, of course, the light keepers dwelling. But you can see the remains down there. Some bricks <coughs> are left, and that was a three-story uh, brick structure with a double. Uh, there was a duplex. Mm -hmm, boy, <laughs> and goodness. And a full basement. And of course, there was a lot of outbuildings and barns and, and houses. 
and uh, the life saving station where golf is. On the other side of the, the tramways and the boat houses. Oh my goodness. It was quite a community at one time. But the erosion has really become a problem within the past five, ten years, hasn't it? Well, yes. In fact, when we first saw this place, we were just unaware of the, that there was an erosion problem or that it wasn't a fixable solution mm -hmm. available. Uh, but last year, 96, uh, the high water levels of Lake Superior uh, were just devastating the, the fall and uh, the winter of last year. The water levels this year aren't any better. So we desperately need, uh, we need a fix right now in the way of probably a large stone. And uh, that's probably the only thing that, that would actually really be what we need. Right. At this point, we're looking for a quick fix solution to keep this from toppling into Lake Superior. But the long range plans are, are more of a permanent basis. And that involves a little more uh, of a, a insight or a, a little more futuristic plan here. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there's two ways to go. One would be an extensive erosion control and the other would be moving the lighthouse. Actually picking up the lighthouse right. and moving and it back. We've already got an estimate from a company that does it. In fact, they, they moved uh, uh, Turo, Light, uh, Turo, Massachusetts, the Highland Light, um, one of the more recent ones. And of course, it was a lot bigger structure than this. So we know it's, it's feasible. It is feasible. And uh, then having the land behind here uh, we know that we can do that and, and work out a, a matching fund situation later on. But right now, being a small historical society and just kind of in the, the beginning stages here, that um, right now financial support is really something we really need for someone to take a real interest in, in Chris Point. Because there isn't time right now for, uh, for grants, matching funds, soon enough mm -hmm. to save this lighthouse. We, we didn't really realize that um, this erosion was going to happen this fast. Some now when you side. did first come across this and uh, you started inquiring, how difficult was it to find information about this as an amateur uh, lighthouse enthusiast? I mean, you weren't out here searching or particularly interested in lighthouses. And as an actually, layman getting into this no, and this, asking this questions. This is the first lighthouse that we'd ever been that close to. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did some inquiring with the, uh, the Coast Guard and we found out that the uh, the main headquarters uh, happened to be in Cleveland, Ohio for this particular lighthouse. And we were <laughs> residents of Ohio at the time. So we worked with a, a, a woman, Ann Grasso, from the uh, Coast Guard. And it took us almost five years working with her and uh, to, to acquire a lease. Mm -hmm. And we didn't realize at the time then that the disposition of the lighthouse was going to happen that fast, especially at this point. This point was one of the, the quickest lighthouses to go to uh, General Services, GSA, oh. for uh, to be sold. <laughs> really? And uh, before that happened, uh, we thought it was a, a government progression as far as who would, would be owner. And then being a nonprofit, we jointly made a we formed a historical society, a nonprofit with the state of Michigan, in preparation for the lease. And uh, we didn't get that lease until the end of. Uh, 94. Mm. So it took us 95 and into 96 to get some expert uh, advice as to what to do. And we had uh, erosion control experts, uh, Dick Homburg out there, he's from Michigan. And like I said, the Corps of Engineers and uh, a lot of other opinions as what to do. Mm -hmm. and, um, but that is not the, the big problem, I think, is uh, you have all the information and yes, what to do, do but of we course sure you run into all sorts of roadblocks and, and uh, situations where you need a lot of help a lot of uh, assistance. Yes, we do. Uh, the historical society that we formed was really uh, the beginning of it, and we've got a, a lot of interested people that have uh, joined for a year or two-year membership and have really come forward and, and taken interest, and we get cards almost every day from people that say, is there something you can do? And basically that's what we want to know too. We've, we've contacted all our senators and congressmen and representatives, and. Uh, just try just about everything that, that we know possible. So we're open for anything that mm -hmm. uh, if, some, if there is a suggestion out there or some road we haven't traveled, uh, who sure would like to know about it mm -hmm. because the time is really limited. We can't stop the erosion, but we can build up enough stone base to protect it through another winter uh -huh. and, and until right. we can possibly get some funding as mm -hmm. far as uh, in a grant situation or a 50-50 like matching fund mm -hmm. thing.
But right now, those things take time and we don't, we just, we just are out of it. Time. We made that visit with Nellie and Don Ross back in August of 97. Since that time, much has happened. The Historical Society has continued to garner support and volunteers to help reinforce the shoreline with massive sandbags to hopefully see the tower through till spring. Nellie reminds us, though, that much has still to be done to preserve the Chris Point Light. You can find out more about the preservation efforts and become involved by visiting the Michigan Magazine website and going to our links to places we've been page. We wish the best to the Chris Point Light Historical Society and would like to thank Nellie and Don Ross for bringing to our attention the plight of the Chris Point Light.